I've got some brand new Faber-Castell Pitt Graphite Matte Pencils. So let's give these a try today by drawing a lovely cute puppy dog. Now the first thing you need to do is get that outline drawing onto the paper. And I'm going to be using graphite back paper for this. And that's because I find it a little bit easier to transfer the image onto the paper rather than trying to do it freehand. Yes, freehand drawing is a really good way of practicing your hand-eye coordination skills, it really is. So there's no substitute for that whatsoever, so you must do that as well for different projects. But just for ease, just for speed more than anything. I just want to try and get the outlines onto the paper really accurately. And this is just the main outlines, the main structure of this puppy. Not too many of the fur details, but I do want to put a few little lines where the fur details go, so more or less indicating the direction the fur grows. Also have a quick peek underneath. Now you notice I got this tape down along the top edge of this printout. And also little pencil markers across the printout and the watercolour paper. This that way around I can reposition this printout if I need to at a later stage. Now when you've done that, get your mechanical pencil. And this is a Faber-Castell 0.5 lead nib. And guess what? I've got something else which is made by Faber-Castell. And now this is a putty eraser. And I use this a lot within my paintings, I really do. So when I transfer the graphite onto the watercolour surface, it's too dark. I'm leaving this a little bit darker so you can see where it is. Now the pencils I'm using today, again, is by Faber-Castell. So it's got its own little eraser in there, and the leads go from HB all the way through to 14B. 14B! 14B, so really soft lead. They start with a HB, so they don't go into the, the like a 2H or 4H or anything like that, which are harder leads. But this is okay, HB is fine for the sketching side of things. I'm also going to be using two different erasers. These are made by Tombow, and they're called Mono Zero. You also get a blending stump in the kit as well. But I've actually got some of my own, which I've had for many, many years. Look at the colour of it, I know. But they work really, really well. And hence the name, it's there for blending that graphite pencil. And they also supply a pencil sharpener as well. Now, if you're like me and you've got plenty of pencil sharpeners, this is a good one. This is one by KUM, and it's an automatic long point. And this is a standing paper block to get a very fine tip on that pencil. I'm also going to be using a glove. Well, call it a glove. It's like a half glove, isn't it? And these are very often used by people working with graphics and also working with tablets, iPads, that sort of thing. And it's a good way of preventing the natural oils on your hands going on that watercolour paper. So the idea of this just goes on the two bottom fingers, that's it. And it's both for left or right handed as well, they're not expensive to buy. Now using my HB lead first of all, I'm going to go around the eye and just kind of reinforce some of those outlines and main structure around the eye. If I reposition the pencil in the palm of my hand so it's lower down, I can get more of a flatter feel to it so I can kind of graze the paper with the side of the lead. Now I'm going to rub down my blending stump and that's because very often with a newer stump they tend to be a little bit too hard and this will soften it down a little bit. And using that I can very lightly, very light, don't press too hard, soften down that graphite a little bit on there. Now let's go for the 6B pencil next. And this is where we can add another layer over the top. So first of all, go around the outside edge, try and redefine certain areas, and then go around that pupil, look at all them details inside the eye. Now if you do like this video, don't forget to click on like and subscribe, because when you subscribe to my channel, there's a good chance you shouldn't miss one of my videos. Now these pencils are really, really nice to buy, and as you believe it or not, Faber-Castell do say that these pencils are very good for reducing the shine on the graphite. You know when you do a pencil drawing and you kind of tilt it towards the light, get a lot of shine on there, don't you? But less so with these. You still get a little bit, especially when you go heavy on the pencils, I think. We'll find that out later on near the end, okay? And see how shiny they are. But let's see if these pencils work the way that they say they do. Let's sharpen this pencil down just a touch. So this is a long point on this KUM pencil sharpener I've got. And this is a really good way of getting, as it states, a long point on the pencil. And then you can use your sanding paper to very lightly sharpen the very tip of this to get an extremely sharp point, which is what I'm after here. Look at that reference photograph. Try to see what I'm seeing. Try to see all them details that we can see within the eye there. Now, depending on how large you draw this will depend on the amount of detail you can get inside the eye. So a little suggestion, when you're drawing from a reference photograph, say on an iPad, a tablet, a mobile phone, printed off, whatever it might be, try to keep that reference photograph to the same size 
as you're drawing, because at least that way around, you're not trying to draw too many details in the eye or within whatever subject you're drawing that you can't really see in reality, not really. No one has zoomed out the way that it is on your drawing. So keep that reference photograph to the similar size as your drawing. Now let's go for that 14B pencil. This is a really, really darkest pencil, and I'm not pressing on too hard with this. I'll show you in a minute what I mean by that. But I don't want to go too hard with it. But you can see the difference straight away when I'm using a softer leaded pencil. And that's without applying too much pressure. This is where you can start to get those really dark areas in. And once you've got the dark areas in, then you can decide if you want to add more mid-tones in. So we've got the lightest tones, we've got a little bit of mid-tone, and we've got the darkest tones. And you can play around between those different tonal values as you work around the eye. In fact, as you work around the entire body. Now the good thing about working with graphite and working with all these different tonal variations is that it can really help you when you're working with, say for example, a watercolour. So working with a variety of colours. So understanding what things look like in black and white first of all will certainly help you choose the colours that you'll need for the watercolour project. Now let's go for our Tombow, Tombo, and we'll start to lift off a little bit of that uh, pencil off there. Just kind of highlight certain areas a little bit more. Really handy having something like this because you can also use it for pulling out hairs within the animal as well. I'll show you that one later on as well. Then using the side of the pencil again, very lightly graze the watercolour surface with this very soft 14H pencil. I know. And then use that to go around different areas. Try to darken slightly, but using the lightest of touch. I do find that if you go too heavy with a pencil to begin with, yes, you'll get a shine, but also it's difficult to layer something over the top and it's also difficult to kind of lift that pencil off as well. But take your time and go around those areas. So let's go back to the 6B, shall we? This is quite a nice one. I mean, to be honest with you, the pencils I've got here, my old pencils, which are made by Derwent, only go up to a 9B. And that's still a very soft leaded pencil. So remember with the pencils that you've got to look at the different kind of softnesses on them. So you've got to go from a HP down, which is going to be harder lead, so it's going to be a 2H, 4H, 6H, or whatever else, all the way down that scale. They're really hard leads, and they're ideal for getting those finer, lighter lines. However, saying that, I know this kit doesn't come with anything below a HP, but when you get to HP, then you go higher, you get softer leads, such as 2B, 4B, 2B or not 2B, 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, and so on and so on, and even ones in between that scale as well. So it depends on which ones you want to buy and which ones you want to try out. But if you want a really soft lead, which will give you a darkest line, remember this is graphite. It's not, it's not a permanent marker pen or anything like that, which is really black. So remember, you're drawing with pencil at the end of the day. But for those different varieties of lead tones, it's worth having a good set like this one, for example, where you can work from light all the way through to dark as well. Now this is where I start to work on those first layers of detail. But notice I'm keeping these layers light, so I'm not going too dark with them at the moment. I don't want to. I want to gradually build this up bit by bit. So I'm using basically a softer leaded pencil. This is a HB pencil again. Just go around all these areas. Look at the direction the fur grows, okay? So think about that all the time. And also, you'll notice that on some areas, there's a bit of a curve in the fur as well. It's not all straight lines. Overlap these lines at the same time. Think about crisscrosses. I do this with the watercolor paintings I do as well, believe it or not. Okay, so overlapping them. And also consider the length of the lines. That's really important. Don't press on too hard, because when you do press on too hard, you'll leave an indentation on that watercolor paper. And again, if you do wish to remove that pencil by lifting some pencil off, you'll find it harder to lift if you pressed on too hard. So just use a light touch like I'm showing you there on the back of my hand. So all you need to do. Think about light layers to begin with and gradually build those layers up as you go along. Now when you're working on the ear, notice that these lines are actually quite long as well. So just remember that with that area and also notice that some of the lines or some of the fur, should I say more than anything, tends to curve within that ear. Notice as well when you look around the right hand leg that the fur actually goes more towards the right to begin with, then starts to veer towards the left. So think about the middle of the leg, that's the division area, that's where it's going to start going at different directions. Now the nose and muzzle area gets quite tricky because you've got to consider the lines around there. Now the lines are very, very small as well. First of all, you want to think about the shading. So think about the curvature of that nose. 
That's what I'm trying to do with there. Just get the basic shape in to begin with. We can add more detail over that in a minute. Now, if you do fancy taking up watercolour painting, or if you are a watercolour artist, and you like wildlife, don't forget to visit my Patreon channel, where I currently have over 150 video lessons for you to have a go at. I'll pop the link in the description down below. Let's go for the 6B pencil next, shall we? So this is now a little bit softer, sort of a mid-range softness on the leads. And I'm trying to think about the basic details on the nose to begin with. So again, thinking about the shading, the curvature, the shape of that nose. Not so much the tonal values just yet. Now once you've worked out where all the parts go within the nose, just work around the area and start to darken them gradually. Don't press on, remember. You can see it's darker towards the bottom of the nose. But yet there are light spots in between as well. We still need these mid-tones on so you can start adding the darker tones over the top of that. Once you get the darker tones on, this will really start to come together. It really will. So gradually carry on and darken that nose as you go along. I mean, that's using that, um, well, the B, the black pencils, really. So remember, with the pencils, what you're looking for is anything with a B in it. Not a bzzz, not that sort of B, no. And I think this 14B is another one that Faber-Castell's come up with, which is unusual. As I said earlier on, 14B is not something you would normally find. So it's probably another world first by Faber-Castell. Who knows? It could very well be. But what I'm trying to do with this drawing is I'm not trying to press on too hard with it because the fact is I want to see at the end if there's much in the way of shine on it. If I press on harder, I know that this pencil will go even darker. Not black black, because it's still, well, pencil isn't at the end of the day. It's still graphite. Now it's in very tiny circles on the nose, just kind of create more of a textured feel to it. So let's go back to the 4B pencil and start to work around the top of the eye. Look at the direction, then lines go again. Now you see that when you add a softer lead on the top of the lighter colour, you can see the way it's starting to show the shape now even more so. With a few little stipples in between at the same time. Look at the angles, look at those curves as per usual. And only darken the areas that need to be darkened. You find that's below this eye, below the right eye. It's a little bit lighter in one area, isn't it? Really light. So try to maintain the lighter areas while you're doing this. Yes, you can lift off pencil if you wanted to later on. You can do that. But the less lifting off you need to do, the better, really. And then start to work around the eye and the top of the head at the same time. Look at the different tonal areas that you can see. So where it's a little bit darker in places. Press you around the eye. This is like a massive eyebrow on these dogs, isn't it? This little puppy. <laughs> then do the same around the other eye as well. Using your blending stump, very lightly soften those details. How to do that because it helps to embed that graphite into the paper that little bit without pressing too hard again. Which then allows me to put another layer over the top, a darker layer in places over the top as well. Look around the nose and notice how the lines are very, very short, aren't they? Very, very short. But they all seem to aim towards the top of the nose. So if you imagine the top of the nose is the centre of a clock, for example, or middle of the nose, that area. All these lines tend to converge around there, though they seem to point towards the middle of the nose. So it's worth noting that when you're working around there. Darken the area on the forehead, which comes down centrally between the eyes, and then we can go for our darkest lead again. This is where we can really start to make the tone stand out, to create more of a shape towards this lovely face. So add those darkest lines in, try not to cover all of those finer lines, those lighter lines up. Because you spent all that time putting it all on the paper. You don't want to cover it all up again, do you? Of course not. But you do want to make sure that you're adding those darkest marks in first of all. Now, if you add the darks in first, you can then kind of readjust the mid-tones thereafter, can't you? Take note about the way that the ear folds over the top of the face. So it's going to be really dark underneath that ear, isn't it? In places, not everywhere though. Again, refer to that reference photograph. I do that every few seconds when I'm doing a painting, or in this case, a graphite drawing. Every now and then, sharpen that pencil a little bit more. So again, using my sanding paper, just get a very fine tip on that pencil. So I want some very, very fine lines. You know, actually you can tell when you look closely at these pencils as well, the, the graphite itself, you can see it's actually duller. It's not a shiny graphite on the pencil. And they feel harder as well to work with because when you sharpen the pencil, it doesn't break. Not like some of the pencils I bought in the past where the very often you put it in the pencil sharpener, you know, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. And the pencil lead just snaps nearly every time you try to sharpen it. Yes, that could also be prone to dropping the pencil on a hard surface, I know. 
because I can shatter the pencil lead inside the wooden shaft of the pencil. So remember, don't drop your pencils on anything. Really don't. But these are definitely harder. And because they're harder, you can get a finer point on these pencils as well. A really kind of sharp point, which can also utilise for those very fine details as well. Notice around the muzzle the way that I'm trying to work on these areas by making sure that one, the lines are in the right direction and also they're curved as well, aren't they? So it's darker towards the right hand side as you look at that drawing. So you have to think about the light source, so which way that light is coming from. And in this case, we can tell that the light is coming from more or less the top left hand corner, or thereabouts anyway. Hence the left hand eye, as we look at it, being very illuminated. I'm really thinking about those very dark areas now. Not too heavy, don't want to go too hard, remember. So a little bit more pressure. And by doing so, can really add those darker tones in. Be very careful around the nose. Again, think about that shape and really look carefully at that reference photograph. And you can see what I mean that when you look around there, there's plenty of shape involved, plenty of darks in there. Then darken above the nose as well. Now with the ear, the ear, think about the curves, working blocks as you work your way down that ear. Don't try and do it all in one hit. So it's not continuous lines all the way down, is it? They're kind of layered as you go down the ear. You have to remember as well, the ear's got a bit of a twist, a bit of a bend into it, as in like a slight dip in the middle of it. So again, you've got to try and replicate that. But you can do that by applying these marks in the right areas, by also working, as I said, in little blocks. Now, Faber-Castell do say that this is a world first that stands for reduced reflection on paper, for maximum tonal value density and incredible depth effect. The soft layout gives the drawing a spontaneous, artistic touch and is ideal for extravagant sketching and drawing. Now, I wouldn't say I'm extravagant. No, of course not. The big graphite matte pencil is extra break resistant. Ah, I thought that might be the case. Light fast and features environmentally friendly water-based varnish. Well, that's good then. So yeah, very good pencils indeed. So keep darkening. Look again at that photograph. Look at the really dark areas you can see within that picture. And when you get to the ear again, start to think about how dark it is in certain sections. So instead of thinking about the ear as a whole, think about it as small areas. Now the dog does look like it's leaning on something, doesn't it? Which on the photograph it is, I know it is. So let's just put a darkened area down there, so more of a gradient really. Just by applying the pencil to the paper and using your blending stump just to soften it down just a touch. And then I'm going to use my Tombow erasers. Have a play with these and try and lift off a little bit of that graphite around the ear first of all. Now it does leave a little bit of a residue behind so you do have to brush it off with some kitchen roll or a bit of tissue afterwards. But you can see it does work quite well. It doesn't take it back down to the white of the paper though. Bear in mind this is watercolour paper so it's got a bit of a texture to it. You might find it easier on a smoother surface paper possibly. Now this is an erasing shield. It's something which I've used many times in the past and I've had it for quite a few years. So give it a quick clean and I'll use it for taking out a small dot within the eye. Just makes life a little bit easier, that, doesn't it? Now, is there much of a shine on this? Not really, is there? I think there's just a hint of a shine on the darkest marks there. And you can see, it works really, really well. How do you fancy learning how to paint a dog in watercolour? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pop a little link to the top right-hand corner of the screen for you. I'll see you there.